Hi, I'm George Cow. I'm happy to be here with Steph Lagana. Um, first of all, let me say hi to you, Steph. Thanks for being here. So excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm excited to have this conversation with you because we are kindred spirits for sure. Um, we uh, both serve our clients in terms of both the kind of business side of things and also to bring us more spiritual element into it. So I'm really excited to kind of have this discussion with you, um, hear more about what kind of uh, work you do with your clients, how, uh, what are some of the ideas that have been really um, transformational for them. And anyway, everyone watching this, I think you'll, you'll find this to be an uplifting uh, conversation. So Steph, before we go on, I'm going to share your bio with everybody. And so people know uh, some context for where you're coming from. So Steph is a former national security staffer turned business strategist and spiritual teacher. Now that's already very interesting. We can just stop there. No. Um, she helps energy sensitive entrepreneurs, which I know a lot of you are watching this, create businesses they love. Uh, her clients um, have watched all the webinars you know, that are out there, but they're worried that they aren't cut out to be an entrepreneur. And Steph helps them to finally get their message out into the world and build their business in a way that feels connected to their soul. And uh, Steph's got a great website. It's called mythicalenterprises.com. And, and let me actually just start there if it's okay. Tell me about the story behind mythicalenterprises.com. Like why mythical enterprises? It is the most random thing. So I was really hyped about this idea of being a digital nomad. I don't know if you remember that, yes. like in the late yes. 2000s, there was so well, much conversation. Right. Yeah. I, I, any time before the pandemic, it, it was big. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. There, it's been like a little sine wave, you know, just yeah. um, in 2011, I bought that do domain. And I was thinking that I would be sharing like poetry and stories of legendary adventures. So it was mythical in the sense of, of legendary. Wow. And I had no idea what I was going to do with it. It was just something that felt really right deep in my bones. And so I bought it on January 11th, 2011. And I look back at that and I go, that was it. <laughs> there was a curve uh, that I surfed in my path as a part of that. Something That's so cool. I, it's so general. I, I've always, the one one ones have followed me for many years. Um, it's so strange. Uh, there, there, there are periods of my life where they will pop up in, in, in groups. And actually it just ha just happened a few days ago. It stopped a few, it stopped maybe two days ago, but it was like suddenly for three, four days, it would just be in, be in a group and then it would stop and then it would come back again. And it's, it's the weirdest thing, but I love that. <laughs> I love the signs and synchronicities. Yeah. yeah, totally. Totally. Um, okay. So there's so much to talk about. I want to ask, um, you know, you, you bring spirituality into business and I, I'd love to, to know how, how you mean by that. Um, there are a couple of things I'll ask you particularly, but I'll kind of let you start to share what, what do you, what is, why is it important to bring uh, our spirituality into our work, into our business? So the people that I serve are definitely steering by an internal compass. Yeah. And so when money becomes the point, all navigation systems go astray everything gets wonky. And I think it's really important to acknowledge that different things serve different people. Yeah. And I'm here to give people options. I'm here to create space for people that aren't served by the very dominant, very aggressive hustle and grind culture. The people that I serve are the people that are totally lit up when they think about serving other people. Um, and when they think about like the positive, powerful impact that they can make in the world. And so when they set up uh, goals that are only linked to money, everything shuts down. It's like this amazing lighthouse and all of the bulbs blink out and things don't work. I love that. Yeah. So, so you have, you have a couple of sort of specific things you work on with clients and I want you to sh talk about that a little bit. One is um, energetic allies and another one is kind of the spiritual disciplines. Um, you could start either place, but I just think it's fascinating. And, and so, yeah, I think it's a really kind of uh, interesting way to, to bring the practice of spirituality into, into business. Yeah, it's fascinating. And I, and I feel like so juiced that I get to do it. It's like all of the books that I read about like fantasy or science fiction have come to life <laughs> as an adult is I, I didn't have any sort of religious upbringing as a child. Um, so I introduce people to the soul of their business, uh, yeah. to 
an energetic ally called the divine program manager wow. um, to their spiritual board of directors. And all of these things, if you were to take 30, 60, 90 seconds and just sit in a place that felt supportive to you, whether it's at home or outside, you too could connect to these things. I have specific guided visualizations that I take people on, but I very much believe that the energies are out there and that you can work with these allies and they can support you as you move forward. So for instance, I offer an invitation for people to do this work. I have a free challenge on my website to meet the soul of your business, but you can also just tune in and connect um, and also talk with it, you know, like work with the energy of the soul of your business. Maybe it has no specific concern about the current project that you're working on and it helps you see that you're not actually that interested in it and you were doing it because you thought you were supposed to. So there's all sorts of like juicy space. There's like this richness that happens using these energetic allies. I find that mindset work is really useful and there's all sorts of ways that we can move forward, but guided visualizations seem to surpass a lot of the shenanigans that happen in our brains. And uh, so the guided visualizations is something you do one-to-one -one with clients or have you recorded these or how does that work? I do. I have a whole series of recorded visualizations. Um, most of them are in this business building program. I have an incubator that's nine and a half months because it really, I feel like it does take a Perfect. period of time yeah. <laughs> to, to, to give birth to your business, your solo business and become the next level version of yourself. Um, but yeah, I do visualizations all the time. And for me, it really is about connecting people with energy in a significant way. So I have a lot of strange um, but effective intuitive abilities. And one of them is bringing in energy that's very supportive for people that they aren't connected with yet. So the energetic allies are the ones that I have established, like connecting people with the soul of your business or the divine program manager. And you can just have a sheet of paper on your desk every day where you ask for help from her. Normally it's her for the people that come into my world, but certainly it doesn't have to be. Um, but then I'll also do other visualizations. There's something about my ability. It's almost like we're all together in this really beautiful house and I'm really good at opening up the windows <laughs> and this fresh energy comes in that's really clarifying for people and helps them connect in a really deep way to what they want. But there's yeah. like some fog, you know, that's surrounding right. them and it's just the noise right. of everyday life. Yes. Yeah, Fascinating. And Divine program manager. Tell us about that. <laughs> it's funny because, um, I mean, you have a, you, you know, you national security background. It's like very, um, now that's, maybe I'll just go on a tangent a little bit here. Did you uh, reveal these abilities or these, uh, this philosophy when you were <laughs> in that role or no? Oh my gosh, it was like I was commuting every day between two different planets. <laughs> uh -huh, yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it was okay. it was very strange. Um, yeah. And actually, this is my second business. My first one completely collapsed, you know, in flames of glory and was mm. only about connecting with the spiritual world. And so I left the government in 2016. And there wasn't a home for me that fit all of me in my business. But now that I sit at the intersection of business and spirituality. So for me, it's very much the bridge between left brain and right brain all of me has a home. Um, yeah, so it's very, it's very different from the worlds that I used to walk in. But the Divine Program Manager is amazing. So I have this guided visualization. And the way that I do guided visualizations is very different uh, from the ones that I've been exposed to through the course of my life. Because I don't tell people what to see 90% of the time. I ask them what they see which connects with just this creative part, even if you don't believe in energy, even if you don't believe in um, allies and the unseen, there's this way that when our creativity is engaged, we're able to dial really deeply into our intuition because our, our chattery left brain calms down. It has to in order for our intuition and our creativity to engage. And so there's this way that this really strong information shows up um, and it's just really fun. Anytime I think that you can give people space not to have to do all of the things um, and, and be on track for that burnout culture, I just think it's incredible treasure. Uh, wow, yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, I, I like that you are 
tapping into the client's own um, creative imagery, you know, uh, that's really cool. So uh, you also help clients develop a spiritual discipline um, that helps their work. I'm sure it helps their life too, but tell us about that. What is, what is a spiritual discipline uh, that you recommend or how, how does that work? Yeah. And so it's kind of related to the visualizations in that I'm helping people tap into what's inside of them and what wants to happen. But it's also about whatever I can do to help my clients and my audience reclaim their sovereignty in a world that tells them everybody else has a better opinion, not talking about systems or medical expertise, <laughs> but like sovereignty over your own life, you know, like what's the best decision for you in any particular specific situation. Um, the spiritual discipline is this vibrational anchor. It's something that is practical, but it's also energetic. So it's a maximum of 10 minutes a day. So it's somewhere between five to 10 minutes. And I get people that show up that might have a whole bunch of practices, like they're doing some sort of, you know, 90 minutes of movement and then they're meditating. And so some people just need to sit down or be in nature and not ask anything else of themselves and, you know, be in that space of, of simplicity and, and clarity. Um, and then I get other people who are very rebellious, which I absolutely identify with, and they need a selection of things that they can choose from as opposed to doing one thing over and over again, the same thing over and over again, because that doesn't, um, it doesn't light them up. It doesn't energize them. So it can look like so many different things. And I love that because it shows just like the vibrant spectrum of humanity. Like I have people that have colored in coloring books. And I also have people that have done journaling, um, automatic writing. They've, they've done meditation. I've had people that have done dance parties. And so it's just a way of really plugging back in to oneself. And there's, I mean, you see this, there's so much noise in our world and there's a lot of chaos. So being able to plumb our own depths and get really still and clear um, and connect back to our core essence frames the world that we walk in and creates this, this really beautiful path. So it's a lot less cluttered. It's a lot more joyful. Things make a lot more sense when you anchor into yourself first and then navigate your day. That's beautiful. That yeah, that's, that's great. I love that. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, I love that you allow the clients to come up with some practice that really works for them. And you kind of, you kind of help them to discover that or rediscover that. Um, and so I'm curious how this uh, now, you know, let's say the, the client has done the spiritual discipline um, is connecting to well, the, the, so the divine program manager is, 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 is a connection that happens in the beginning of the day. What happens during the day itself? So, so, and I'm connecting this also to the way that mainstream work usually happens, you know, hustle and grind, that kind of stuff, right? So just thinking through a particular day for a client or say a sample day. Um, when they get to work, when they are doing their business um, and they feel some resistance um, or they feel like, oh my gosh, I have all these things to do. What, how do you advise them or what's the, what should they do at that point? When they meet resistance, well, sometimes resistance is um, an obscured no. It's a no that we, our body knows and that our heart knows, our soul knows that social conditioning is telling us should be a yes. Mm. And so there's this tension between, I know what I'm supposed to be doing and I know, <laughs> I know what I feel like. And so then it becomes this impasse. Um, so I think that's really interesting because sometimes we talk about resistance and we don't recognize there's this translation um, that we're not doing. You know, there's another layer of interpretation. Yeah, but if you're up for it, I feel like it would help to kind of zoom out on the process that I use. Would that be okay? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? yeah. So I believe that social conditioning covers up a lot of strengths and a lot of preferences. And in particular, whatever people's soul genius is. Mm. And so people will come to me and they'll have an idea of a niche or they'll just have some sort of training and they'll know that they want to be deeply of service. You know, it's in their heart. They absolutely want to positively, profoundly be of service in the world. But what does that look like? 
And so the start of my process is helping people to understand that there's a new energy paradigm for people that are sensitive, for people that feel resonant with it, that sometime around 2011, things started to shift and people were propelled towards whatever path they're on today and that there are energetic allies that they can tap into the unseen. But in particular, they can take a look at their life path and see how their background and their voice and who they are as a person informs who they can serve. And so the tradition that I was trained in, there was a lot of emphasis on just reaching backwards. You know, like who's the version of you five years ago that needs help? What can you do to support them and just reach a hand back? Um, but I find that people that come into my world need that support to understand what their, their genius is, what, what their magic is. And it doesn't have to be in a way that's like super pressurizing, like, oh, I got to find my magic. Where's my, you know, like look under the rock, <laughs> let me find my magic. But just like in a joyful way, what does it look like to recognize what I'm good at? Um, and a part of that is brushing away that social conditioning that says, oh, it's no big deal. Like, I mean, everybody can do that. No, they can't. <laughs> everybody has different skills yeah. and talents. And so then as they get to that point, so they're understanding, hey, there's this new paradigm. There's the unseen that they can work with. They have this soul genius. They need to claim it. And then they start to see how there's preferences that they have. Like maybe they really would rather... Um, only work two days a week, or they are in a space where they do their best work at night. And everyone has told them that they should work five days a week and that they should do their best work in the morning. And so there's this way that claiming your genius and claiming your strengths supercharges everything else that you, that you do. And it's like this cascade effect, at least that's what I see in my clients and my audience. There's this way that there's this kind of like stampede of good things that happen when you start to claim who you are and the way that you work. And so then there's this kind of like squishy phase where I help people dial into the place where their particular genius wants to be expressed. Like how does it want to happen in the world? So some people want to write books and some people want to have YouTube channels and some folks really enjoy one-on-one -on -one coaching and they love not, uh, networking. Like they love connecting with people and just having really joyful conversations. So finding that place where they feel really nudged and they feel really um, expressed and energized and then understanding the way that they work and how that transforms into a business model. I know this may sound bananas, but I really do think that for every single person, there is a business model that can fit them. And it's just a matter of what does it look like on a really deep level to understand the way that they want to operate and what gives them joy. That's, that's brilliant. Yeah, it's amazing. I love that you are um, kind of helping them uh, work through these big questions in a kind of more of a lighthearted, um, gentle way, um, instead of instead of the stressful like you must find the right answer now, otherwise you know. And so it's great that you are helping them to see both the sort of the things that the strengths that they just discount. Oh yeah, well everyone can do that, but no, it's, you you recognize that in them, and then you help them to connect that to a business model that really works for them and a kind of a productivity model, I guess, a time system maybe, or that, that works for them. Um, I, I, I find it interesting. You said about, you know, some, you know, a lot of people say, Oh, you got to do your best work in the morning. You know, first thing in the morning you should do. Your, uh, and some people are night owls, you know, and um, it's funny because my, my wife is a night owl actually. Um, you know, she, she's like, her hours are like, you know, 11 AM to 2 AM, something like that, you know? And uh, at first, you know, uh, when, 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 when we met, I'm like, that's not acceptable. You know, we should have the same out. You know? But then over time, like, actually, it's actually really nice because you know, I, then I get the mornings to myself, you know, and then she gets the evenings to herself. And so it's like, it like worked out, worked out really well. But um, yeah, and Love. of course now, now, now with the global, you know, sort of, uh, I mean, so many people are working virtually now. You're, you know, the fact that if you're a night owl, that means you could serve people at different time zones that the people who are, uh, you know, uh, early birds can't, so. But you yeah. were saying? No, I was just going to say, like, I love the diversity and like the variety of expression that yeah. humans have. Like, yeah, we're yeah. just, we're all so different. I've, I've had, so I went through coach training in 2013. So 
I've worked with a lot of different folks over that course of time. And there have been some people where I've just thought like, uh, the things that they enjoy, uh, you couldn't pay me enough money to do those things. <laughs> like, and yet they seem to be telling the truth. And I just, I find it fascinating how we can all operate so differently, including you know, there are some people that thrive on one-to-one -one conversations. I love supporting people in, you know, real-time coaching conversations. And I also know some people that don't want anything to do with that. Like, they don't even want to shake a stick towards it. Like, when they work with people, it's completely asynchronous. And I just, yeah, I get super jazzed by all the different ways that people come to whatever their goal looks like. Yeah, and, and the diversity is wonderful because you know, the clients and the students and the customers need diversity. There's also diversity. People like working as well uh, with, with providers. Um, so Steph, as we wrap up this uh, conversation, uh, just how, how can people work with you? So those who are watching or listening right now, they're wanting to take the next step with you. What's, what should they do next? Um, I have a free Facebook group for folks that are on the book of face and it's called Your Sacred Craft. And so there's a lot of really juicy conversations and a really gentle and supportive community that's developing there. Um, we're under a thousand people. So it's still at the point where things feel like, you know, grounded and anchored. And I do some energy. You know, it's interesting. I just want to say today, today's number in, in your group is exactly 777. What up? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I swear, like I said, I, maybe it's still following me because over the past week, it's like, I've seen the, I've seen the repeated numbers over and over and here it is again so here we are 777 perfect <laughs> i love that for me it feels like this really warm hug when i see repeating numbers or yeah, feel those yes. kinds of synchronicities it yeah, yeah it just makes me feel like the team is there and they're yes. here to help and that's right i don't have to do it alone that's brilliant well but you're you're open to more people joining and breaking that that number. We'll we'll, we'll get to nine nine nine. How's that? <laughs> or eight 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 first? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My goal is to keep it like a really tight knit community, something cool. that feels good. Um, but yeah, the the Facebook group Your Sacred Craft is the best place uh, to join us. And I also have a newsletter list over at mythicalenterprises.com. Um, but if you join the Facebook group, I'll tell you all different sorts of juicy things. And there's some really good trainings in there, including like how to discern your niche and how to connect to the soul of your business. Awesome. Um, so I'm happy to, Wonderful. I'm happy to help support people. It lights me up. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um, I'll be sure to include the link to that as well as your website. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, besides that, you, you work with people one-to-one -one on, on service uh, as a service provider, a coach to them. And uh, you also have, like I said, the, the recorded guided visualizations as well? Yeah, most of the guided visualizations are bound up in this nine and a half month incubator right. program yes, that yes. I have. Um, but you can get- Is that get a particular the, start date or? It's actually rolling admissions, oh, which is super so cool. Can join, yeah, at any time. Yeah, okay. yeah, at any time. And it's really neat too, because I find that based on the work that I'm doing, that people just show up and they don't know how they found me or, yeah. Yeah. or they don't know why they got there. They just know. And it just feels really, it feels like another affirmation that I'm where I'm supposed to be. Awesome. Well, I hope uh, those who are watching, if you resonated with Steph's energy, reach out, join the, um, the Facebook group, Your Sacred Craft, Magical Tools for the Action Ready Entrepreneur. I love that. And the website is mythicalenterprises.com. So with that stuff, thank you so much for the work that you do, the way that you do it. And um, yeah, just looking forward to seeing your, um, your presence uh, bless so many more people. Thank Thanks you. so much for this connection, George. I appreciate it.